All right. Uh, I'm ready to get started. So, hello, welcome. Uh, today I'll be talking about managing your server updates with minimal administrative overhead. My name is Zach Alexander. I'm a PM at Microsoft. Uh, I work on Azure Update Management, which is the feature we'll be discussing. You can find me on Twitter at msftzackle, just in case you want to see the latest American Chopper memes. Uh, I have you covered on that account. <laughs> what else is Twitter for? <laughs> Uh, so, here's what we'll be covering today. Um, I'll just talk about update management in general, some customer challenges uh, with update management that I've heard, things that we've been targeting. Um, we're going to review the existing update management tools from Microsoft, so we'll talk about SCCM for a second. We'll talk about uh, WSUS, how that fits into the ecosystem. Then I'll go through Azure Update Management. We'll talk about what's available today. I have a couple demos for you, uh, and we'll talk about Pricing, that ever important conversation. Uh, we'll go through the roadmap, uh, some things that we work, are working on, some things that we are on our radar but uh, aren't necessarily getting worked on today. Then uh, we'll probably have about 15 minutes at the end for Q&A, so please leave your easy, simple questions for me towards the end. Uh, it's fine, you can ask me complicated questions. And then if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this, um, it's that Azure today provides orchestrated update management across operating systems, so Windows and Linux, and across any cloud, so Azure, other clouds, on-premise. So you may have heard uh, security is important these days. Uh, this is a really brief, abbreviated timeline of just a couple of security incidents that have, have made the news. As more companies move online, move more of their uh, assets online, obviously vulnerabilities become more and more important. Uh, these vulnerabilities can be patched, but the question is, are they getting patched? If you, if you work for a company, it's your job to make sure that you're not getting hit by WannaCry, you're not getting hit by Meltdown or Spectre. You definitely don't want to be in the news, uh, but as it turns out, security is not the easiest thing in the world. So when we were designing Azure Update Management, uh, we went out, we talked to a whole bunch of IT professionals, talked to a whole bunch of consultants. We wanted to figure out what are the biggest pain points when uh, managing updates across your environment. And this is what they told us. And if you see something that you're hitting that's not on the list, definitely come talk to me afterwards. We'll make sure that your scenarios are covered as well. But for Windows, you know, the biggest thing we hear here is there's inconsistent reliability. Uh, it's hard to manage multiple maintenance windows, and it's hard to deal with reboots in a Windows environment. Uh, orchestration is not the easiest thing. A lot of critical systems end up patched by hand uh, with manual pre-steps, manual post-steps. Grouping based on workload is very difficult, uh, and there's a need to consume existing uh, groups instead of building new groups every time. Error handling and troubleshooting is extremely difficult, uh, especially when you're looking at some of the error messages that WUA emits. Uh, we need better targeting, we need better reporting, and we need better tracing of those errors. And update deployments rarely have zero downtime. And on the Linux side of things, because um, people are deploying more and more Linux servers these days, there's a lack of tooling for Linux and managing those updates, and especially there's a lack of unified tools. If you have multiple Linux distros in your environment, those distros might all different have different package managers. Uh, it's very hard to find a tool that will go across all those different package managers. Scheduling and orchestration is also pretty limited for Linux. A updates can break applications, and you need error handling and troubleshooting to deal with those as well. There's a lack of control over what packages get applied, uh, when they get applied, what components uh, consume those and it's very difficult to enforce compliance, and there's not a lot of reporting on that compliance. So these are the things that we kept in mind uh, as we started to design for Azure Update Management. Um, and then there's also a bunch of attempts that have been made already by Microsoft to address the patching space, so I just want to talk about how this all fits together. So obviously at the base of it is Microsoft Update. Microsoft Update is for Windows clients, Windows servers. It's the core service. It's meant for direct update. It's not easy to get aggregation across that. Uh, and obviously, it's not available for Linux. So Windows Server Update Services, WSUS, was the first attempt at trying to get that aggregation. Uh, targets Windows clients and servers. Lets you curate, improve uh, proxy patches from Windows updates. There's still you know, a manual process associated with that. It's possible to automate through PowerShell and GPO. 
There's SCCM, that well-loved application we all know. Uh, and that targets, and there's also uh, Intune, which targets Windows clients and devices. So a majority of those SCCM customers are also using patching on those servers. Uh, and uh, you know, again, there's manual steps. There's you can try and automate them, uh, and it doesn't address Linux. There's uh, some workload-specific stuff. So cluster-aware update and patching. It's really targeted at uh, clusters for Windows Server 2012 and above. And that's what allows you to start being uh, cluster aware. It lets you be able to drain, drain nodes from your cluster, patch them, reboot them, add them back to the cluster when they're done. But that's something that is really specific for, for Windows clusters. SCVMM is targeted towards uh, your hypervisors. And there have been a couple of Azure VM extensions for Linux that try and address the Linux side of things. Uh, those have been deprecated and for Cloud Platform System, CPS. There, there have been attempts to do a zero downtime patch and update orchestration, um, but that's limited really strictly to CPS and hasn't made its way outside of CPS yet. So when we look at this, you know, the gaps that we see are mostly around Linux and then uh, ability to kind of start automating these deployments uh, at scale. So I'm here to talk to you about Azure Update Management. And this is just a really high level architectural diagram of Azure Update Management. Um, you can see my mouse pointer here. We're a feature of automation and control. We live inside of Azure. Um, we're able to talk to Azure uh, VMs natively, and then we're also able to talk to other service providers. So if you have VMs in AWS, or if you have things that are on-premise, we have a hybrid worker. It goes onto your machines, and it reports back through, uh, through Azure. So you're able to get a unified view of all your VMs, regardless of whether they're on-premise, in AWS, in other clouds, or in Azure itself. And because we're in the cloud, we're able to offer things. You know, we're reliable. We're highly available. We scale very well. So what this lets you do is it lets you see the state of those machines that you have. You're able to assess whether they have the updates that they need. And you're actually able to schedule update deployments as well. So you're actually able to go in and tell these machines, hey, it's time to update. It's time to patch. Uh, we give that detailed replying, uh, reporting and compliance across Windows and Linux. We handle domain, non-domain joint servers. Uh, we don't really care about your domain status. And we're using uh, native Windows and Linux tools. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. Uh, but on our back end, we are using log analytics. That gives us rich search capabilities. So all the logs that you have from those updates, they get stored in log analytics. You're able to search through them, build strong queries on top of them. Uh, and we do use leverage uh, existing WSUS, AD, and log analytics safe searches. So you're able to take in some of the groups that you already have and deploy against them. <clears throat> we have flexible scheduling options. So we're going to let you do one-time updates, weekly updates, monthly updates. Uh, we are able to bring in those logs and do allow you to do advanced troubleshooting on them. We support proxy environments, so if you're in an on-prem environment and you only have one path to the internet, we allow you to put a, a gateway on there so that you're able to collect <clears throat> logs from the machines that are affected and bring them up into Azure. And we do respect WSUS and private repo configurations. So let's, let's just talk about that part for a little bit. Um, this is, again, a very generic, uh, non-OS specific way that, that we work. Basically, as a user, you schedule an update deployment against Azure Update Management. We have an uh, agent on the machine that checks for any jobs. The, when we see that we have a job, we go against the native update agent. So on Windows, that is the Windows Update agent. Uh, we just invoke that. And on Linux, whatever the default package manager is, we go against that. And we ask it to go to whatever update store it's configured against. So if you're using WSUS and you have it pointed towards a WSUS store, we respect that. If you're using Linux and you have a private repo configured, we respect that. Uh, we install the updates, and then we report that information, that we, the action we just took, we report that to the Azure Update Agent, which pushes that information back into the cloud so you're able to see it, uh, analyze it. Uh, and actually, how many of you are running, have Linux in your environment? How many of you need to manage Linux machines? Okay. 
Uh, so I'm just going to take a minute. This might be a little obvious, but I just want to talk about the Linux update lifecycle. There's actually some special processing that we do for Linux um, to bring in some advanced information. So for those who don't know, <clears throat> this is generally how the Linux update lifecycle works. You have a bug fix. It's committed, it's, uh, it's committed into an open source project. A vendor uh, picks up those fixes. It builds the package, and it publishes it to a repository. Uh, that repository is maintained by the vendor. And then out of the box, uh, Linux servers will just go and talk to that uh, repo uh, through the native built-in tools, so yum, app get, whatever. Updates are retrieved and installed. Or you can actually configure a private mirror similar to WSUS, um, where you just take in the updates that you want, and you can configure your machines to go in and talk to that private repo. Uh, so those, those package repositories, you know, those, those have updates about them, but sometimes vendors, so there's two paths here, right? There's the package repository and your machine goes in and gets that, but vendors will publish uh, information out of band, they will have security built-in data, uh, they publish that online. We will actually go in and download and normalize that data. We will take, we'll cross-reference that against the update data and give you additional security context. So you're able to see, for example, what CVEs are linked to uh, specific package updates on Linux. Uh, and that's all, that's all kept in automation control update management. And in terms of Linux versions, um, this is what we support today. We're always happy to support more. If you don't see your uh, distro here, I'm happy to talk and figure out what it would take to get it supported. But out of the box, we support Red Hat, SUSE, uh, Ubuntu, CentOS, and Amazon Linux. And again, you know, we're always looking to add more distros that we support. So uh, I'm going to start off with the demo of the portal just to kind of show you what the, <clears throat> what the UX looks like, how to start onboarding stuff into here. Uh, do I need to make this a little larger? I think so. OK. So this is, my, this is my Azure dashboard. And actually, I have a machine here that is not enrolled in update management. This is just an Azure VM. And I can go into this VM. In the table of contents here, you'll see Update management. And this is, it's checking the status of my machine. It sees it's not enrolled. If I wanted to enable this, all I have to do is press enable. Um, on the back end, what we're doing is we're looking for a log analytics workspace and an automation account. If you have that stuff already set up and configured in your environment, which I do, uh, you could just go in and choose wherever you're configured. Otherwise, we use a reasonable set of defaults. All you have to do is click enable. And it'll take a little bit for the agent to get deployed. Yes, sir. Right now, uh, we support, so the question is, what if his VM is in another subscription or resource group? Resource group is fine. Um, you're able to pull in from, from the same resource group, or from different resource groups. For subscriptions, uh, we have a script that I can link to at the end of this that will help you onboard VMs from different subscriptions into the same workspace. Uh, we support it, uh, just not through the UX at this time. So uh, we can see that this is being enabled on my machine. It takes a little bit for us to get the agent on there. It takes a little bit past there to actually get the data to come up into our automation account. Um, so I'll, I'll let that bake for a minute. In the meantime, I'll go into our automation account, uh, and I have update management right here. And we can see update management is part of my automation account. And this is going to give me information about my environment. <clears throat> and we can see I actually have a whole bunch of red here. Uh, apparently, Patch Tuesday happened when I wasn't paying attention. And all my, all my machines are out of compliance. So we define compliance as missing critical or security updates. Uh, and all my machines are missing at least one. And we can just take a look here and see, oh, well, I have an Azure Linux machine. Uh, this is actually an EC2 machine. So I have a VM running in, uh, in AWS. And I have that reporting into Azure. And then I have a couple more Azure Windows machines and another Azure Linux machine. So uh, we can see, hey, you know, my Windows machines are all missing one critical, one security update. I can drill into that if I want. Uh, so I can drill into this EC2 machine and see what updates are missing. Uh, this is going to go into log analytics. It's going to give me a log analytics query. And it's going to tell me uh, <clears throat> where, what those updates are. 
so we can see, okay, you know, I, I have a definition update, that's fine, uh, but I also have, uh, there was a cumulative update that came out, um, there's a malicious software removal tool, uh, and there's another update that seems to have a critical impact. Um, but let me show you for Ubuntu, we're gonna actually go in and provide some additional data. This is my Ubuntu machine, and it's missing a couple, a whole bunch of stuff actually. And if I go in over here, we're able to see, let's see here. We can see I have a security update, um, and we can actually go over here. We'll see the package severity. So we can see this is a moderate, moderately important update. And we have a URL that will actually tell us more information, so we can go to that URL. Um, we also pull in the CVE numbers for this update, so we can see this actually has <clears throat> a couple of CVEs. That looks bad. Uh, and if I go into missing updates, I can just see all the updates that are missing across my environment. I can filter it if, I'm need, if, uh, if needed, so I can just say, hey, I want to see if the latest cumulative update is missing in my environment. But for those Linux machines, <clears throat> for Windows, we point out to the KB that explains what this patch address is. And for Linux, we actually point out to the, uh, in this case, the Red Hat Security Advisory. And it gives us a URL, super easy access to see what exactly this one is. So this is an Emacs security update uh, that is important. And that's the, that's the data enhancement that we do in update management. All right, so I have a bunch of non-compliant machines. I want to rectify that, so I'm going to schedule an update deployment. And we'll just call this demo deployment. Uh, let's, target, let's target that Ubuntu machine. It makes me a little nervous. <clears throat> so from here, uh, when I click machines to update, uh, this is gonna show me all my safe searches from log analytics. You can see I've created a couple. Um, if I had AD, WSUS, SESAM groups, they get pulled in as well. I'm able to target those. Uh, but it, we know that there's just a handful of machines I actually want to target. I'm just going to choose individual machines for the minute. So we'll select my two Ubuntu machines. We do update classifications. <clears throat> so there are a whole bunch of updates that are missing from those Ubuntu machines. I may or may not want to install all of those. If I really just want to address the security impact uh, updates, then I could just choose those. In this case, everything should be updated. Um, but let's say I have a production workload that's dependent on Python. I do not want Python to get updated without me knowing about it, without uh, explicit testing on my part. So for the minute, I'm actually gonna go in and exclude Python and make sure no Python updates come down. That way I know that my uh, production workloads are gonna continue working. So I configured a package exclusion there. Uh, for Windows, we'll allow you to do KB exclusion. So if you know for a fact that, hey, uh, this specific KB has been causing problems in my environment, I want to keep it out of the deployment for, as, for now, you can also put in a KB number on Windows. Uh, right now, this is per deployment. Um, and then this is where the powerful stuff really comes in. I could just do this as a one-time update, uh, but <clears throat> as we saw, you know, uh, my machines are all out of compliance. I want to not have to come in and do this uh, every week. So we can actually choose a recurring update. And if I know that, for example, um, the third Sunday of every month is when we schedule our downtime, we're okay not having our machines, up to, uh, machines online during that time, I'm actually able to come in and say, okay, uh, once a month, I want to have every third Sunday, uh, I want to have my downtime. I, that's the time I'm going to reserve for updates to get installed. So I can, I have that flexibility. I could also do the last day of every month. Uh, I could do, you know, the first of every month, anything like that. Well, this is my schedule, every, every third Sunday. <clears throat> and then we define a maintenance window. So a maintenance window basically says, this is how long I want you to stay installing updates. We reserve a couple minutes, uh, 20 minutes at the end for reboots if necessary. Um, and we will install updates until it looks like we're, until we're, we're hitting that threshold of 20 minutes left in the maintenance window. Then we will not install any more updates and allow the machine time to reboot and finish installing those updates. So that way uh, you have some reassurance that the machine is not going to be installing updates for say six hours. Uh, and so I have two hours to find right now. That's fine. I'm gonna create this. So I'm gonna go into scheduled update deployments. 
And we can see here, here's my demo deployment. Uh, it's provisioning right now. Uh, it's targeted at two machines. And if I refresh this, it'll probably come back up as deployed. There we go. So next runtime is going to be 4.15. Wow, I think we've already hit the third Sunday of this month on 4.15. <clears throat> and that's when we know we're going to hit it. So let's fast forward a bit. Let's assume that uh, the deployment happened already, and we want to see what actually occurred. So we can go into update deployments. And we see here uh, demo success. So let's assume that it installed updates and everything worked as, as it should have. We're able to go in and see what machines were impacted as well as what updates were actually installed. As soon as that decides to load. Uh, there we go. So we can see across the entire deployment what updates were installed. We can drill in per machine and see, OK, here are the updates that were installed on this machine. We can see it was a pretty successful deployment. And then what we'll do is we actually uh, monitor the output of that job, and we pull that back up into Azure. So if I wanted to, I could go into all logs here, and we'll see a whole bunch of information about what's been going on. And I'm able to actually see, I don't know if this is going to be the most relevant piece of output. All right. Uh, but we're able to see logs from the machine get pulled in. And you can see, OK. We're refreshing the local repo. We can see the exact command that we are running to get that data from, from the machine. And we can see, OK, this is why these updates got selected, as well as be able to go in, click in, and see, OK, here's the, here's the updates that were installed, any errors that occurred with those updates. So that's, that's the UX. Um, but I know that not everyone comes here for the UX. <clears throat> so I'll show you some of our APIs. We have some REST APIs that are published today. We're working on the commandlets. I gambled on the commandlets being available, and I did not win. So uh, my samples are actually written in, in C Sharp, but it's .NET. You can easily convert that into PowerShell. When the commandlets come out, um, which we're targeting for next month, uh, you'll be able to run this stuff as commandlets. So let me just show you the power of our SDK and what you're able to do. Um, so up here, what I have is uh, just the packages that we're using to build dependencies on this. Uh, and I've configured some information in my back end. I have a service, uh, a service principle that I've configured. It has some secrets. I'm storing that in, uh, in the back end. And I'm going to create a credentials object that has that information. And then with that, I'm going to create an automation client. So the automation client's going to get my subscription ID. <clears throat> and then the resource group that my automation account's in, as well as the name of my automation account. So uh, from there, I'm going to create a software update, uh, software update configuration list result. Uh, so that's I'm going to be querying for software update configurations. Um, that is the deployment that we have. Here I just have a list of my VM resources. Uh, we can see these uh, VMs that we were just looking at. Uh, we have our front end server, Ubuntu test. Uh, this machine with no schedule, I don't, I don't know what that's doing there. but. I've manually created this list. You can easily imagine just querying Azure for all the VMs in your subscription. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in and query each of these machines and see if it has an update schedule attached to it at this time. I want to make sure that all of my machines are receiving updates on a regular basis. If there's a machine in my environment that's not receiving those updates, I want to know about it. So I'm just going to iterate through all of the VMs in my list. Uh, and I'm going to call list by Azure virtual machine name. So uh, I'm going to list all the configurations uh, that are associated with each Azure VM. And if it doesn't exist or the list comes back empty, I'll add it to my list. So let's run this real quick and see what's gonna, what machines I have that do not have an update deployment configured with them. Let me just scroll up for a minute and you can see. So actually, we can see there's one item. And uh, mysteriously, this VM called no schedule does not have a scheduled update deployment uh, due to how I set up my demo environment. So OK, great. I can see that there's one machine in my environment, and it is not going to receive updates anytime soon. So I'm able to use another API of ours to actually go in and correct that. So this is the same setup. I have my automation client. It's going to target the same automation account. We're going to have uh, schedule properties. We're going to say, OK, let's create a one-time deployment. We'll do it uh, 10 minutes from now. And we're going to create, this is a Windows machine. So we're going to create a Windows update uh, configuration. 
And uh, we're going to just target it for critical and security updates. If we had any KBs that we knew we didn't want in there, we could exclude those KBs specifically. And uh, we're going to target my no schedule VM. Uh, although, again, you can imagine just taking in the output of the previous script, plugging it in here, and having all your machines that don't have an update currently scheduled go into this. <clears throat> and then we're going to actually go in and create a new software update configuration with that configuration information and that schedule information. And we're going to call it uh, test software update configuration, and we're going to give it a unique name through GUID. So let's see if this one works. Oh, that didn't scroll. Uh, all right, so it's provisioning, and it's definitely going to work. Ah, it worked. And hopefully, if we go in and run this script again, uh, our, <coughs> our machine's not going to show up on the list. Yep, and we can see, OK, now we have no machines that are not going to get updated. All, our all of our machines have an update configuration associated with them. We're reasonably sure that our machines are going to be up to date. Uh, so let's, let's step back for a second again. OK, I created that update deployment. It's going to fire 10 minutes from now. Um, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So let's just query for uh, a con another configuration that we know works. Let's look at our demo success update configuration again. So we're going to just run, uh, we're going to get by name, demo success. And that should give us some information about this update configuration that is created. Mm. OK, so we can see, yep, we have an update configuration called demo success. Um, it was successfully created. It was a one-time uh, one time schedule, and it fired. It looks like it, uh, its next run is not going to happen, but it started previously on 4.6 at 7 p.m. And we can see the machines that it was targeting there. <clears throat> and that's, that's fine. I know this configuration worked, but I want to see what the actual, I want to see what happened last time it ran. So now, instead of getting the software update configuration, I'm going to get the software update configuration run. So we're going to query, uh, we're going to query for list all the, uh, configure, all the runs for that configuration. And again, we're going to query for demo success. Boy, and I did not create the name demo success in there. Hmm, weird. Okay. Oh, I just had, I highlighted the wrong thing. Okay, great. That's why I use VS Code. And that's why I prefer VS Code. I would have used it if I had PowerShell commandments. But uh, so we're able to see, okay, yep, we had that configuration. Um, it started at 4.6, it started at 7 p.m., and we got a status of succeeded. So we're able to query the state of our last update run and actually see, yep, it worked. All the updates we expected actually got installed. So just to review what update deployment covers, uh, we allow you to choose what updates to install. We let you do approvals via update classifications and exclusions of packages. We let you choose when to install. So we have flexible scheduling options that go from once, daily, monthly, weekly, hourly, whatever you need. You can target computers based on a single computer, or you could use existing groups. So you're able to use your safe search. You're able to use WSUS groups. You're able to use AD groups or SCCM groups. We do have integration with Configuration Manager to pull in some of those groups. Uh, and then for OS support, we support Windows Server 2012 and above, as well as uh, Linux. We support Red Hat, Ubuntu, SUSE, CentOS, Amazon Linux. And we use, the, uh, we use the native agents on those machines. So we use uh, Windows Update Agent or Linux repositories for update configuration. And we use log analytics and the automation platform to get all that to work. So with all that in mind, I've shown you a bunch of awesome, excellent functionality. I know the question on everyone's mind. How much is this going to cost me? And uh, I regret to tell you, oh, actually, no, never mind. It's uh, included as part of your Azure subscription. This is all you pay for is uh, the logs that get set up with log analytics. Our goal is to make Azure uh, the best and the easiest platform to manage. This is part of that goal. So when you have an Azure subscription, update management is totally included for Azure VMs and for on-premise VMs as well. So you have no excuse not to use this, is what I'm telling you. 
Uh, and then from a backlog, you know, I show you some stuff, but there are some gaps, especially based on what we talked about in the beginning, um, addressing some of the complaints people have with update management in general. So uh, we want to have richer update inclusion rules. If you have just one update that you want to deploy, if a critical patch comes out and that's the only patch you want to send out to your environment, or if you want to just uh, stage patches first and once they're known good, deploy them to the rest of your environment, we're working on update inclusion. We're working on reboot control uh, so that you can say, hey, don't reboot these machines right now. I want to schedule another run where rebooting is OK. Um, and obviously, commandlets we are working on. We want to deliver PowerShell commandlets for update management so you can start automating all this stuff. After that, we want to have some richer support for groups. Uh, right now, we're only evaluating group membership once. Uh, and we want to be able to, when you have new members added to the group, we want that to be reflected in your update deployments without any work on your part. And then we want to start working on update orchestration via pre-post scripts. So being able to allow you to uh, deploy a pre-script a pre that says, let me get ready for this update run, let me shut down my services, let me make sure everything's good. Uh, and then a post script that says, let me make sure that I'm coming back online okay, let me run any checks that I have. And then our backlog is, this is not ordered, but this is just a list of things that are kind of on our radar, uh, things that people have asked for and uh, asked that we are aware of. So right now, approvals and management, we can have a richer story there. Um, we do integrate with WSUS, so if you have an existing WSUS server, we will respect all that approval workflows, but uh, what I hear is people want to get away from maintaining WSUS servers all the time. I understand that. Uh, we want to start giving some better information about the reliability of patch installation. Uh, we have access to some telemetry that we'd like to surface to you. Hey, these patches are more, more or less likely to succeed. We can support pre-checks to make sure that those patches are definitely going to work. So for example, querying for available disk, disk space. Make sure that uh, the patch isn't going to fail because you didn't have enough uh, room on your hard drive. Uh, orchestration is something that we want to continue improving, uh, making sure that uh, we have really rich experience around that orchestration. Patching third-party products is something that we get asked for a lot. We're aware of it. Um, we would love to, in the future, provide that, and we're aware of the ask. And then better integration with uh, your IT service manager products. Right now, because we're based on top of log analytics, you are able to build a log analytics query and generate some alerts off of that, uh, but we can always improve in that area. So uh, before I open the floor for questions, I just want to reiterate, you know, the key takeaway here is Azure provides a free orchestrated update management service across any OS, Windows and Linux, and any cloud, uh, Azure, AWS, other clouds, and on-premises. So with that said, uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. No, uh, so the question is, how does the integration with AWS work? Um, it's the same as on-premise. You just deploy our agent, and uh, our agent will just report normally. So there's not an integrated tool within AWS that allows you to do it, but we have an agent. You deploy it via command line uh, however you want, uh, and we'll start reporting data in. Um, you still need to configure firewall rules and all that stuff, but we will consume data from AWS agents. Uh, way in back. What, uh, what was the minimum version of Windows? Did you have plans to for uh, any other version? Uh, right now, our minimum, uh, our minimum version that I put up there was Windows Server 2012. We require WMF 5, so if you have 2008 R2 and you install WMF 5, that will work. Uh, I think, yes. How do you handle content charges? Like, do you see customers maybe putting like a WSUS instance or something up in Azure so that they don't have to pay for the bandwidth coming back on-prem or something like that? Or do they just use Windows Update at that point? Uh, right now, customers are just using Windows Update. Um, it's a good question about the, the, the bandwidth, the ingress or egress. I have to look into that, actually. It hasn't come up yet. Yes, sir. Uh, um, audit and remediation. So after I've run through this, my manager wants to know, or my security manager wants to know, Okay, what patches did you put up? Which ones are there? Which ones are missing? Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't install this patch, why? Yeah. So <clears throat> we put most of that data into log analytics. You are able to say, hey, for this update run, like here are the patches that I put on. Here are the patches that didn't install. There's one other point. 
that you had in there that I think I didn't cover. Remediation, which ones were missed and what are we going to do about it? And yeah, so the remediation story would be through errors. Um, it sounds like we could improve there, so I'd be happy to talk to you afterwards about like what specific reports you need and how we can make it easier to generate those reports. Yeah, the other question is if I can get the report automatically generated and emailed to me so I don't have to deal with it. Uh, yeah, I think that log analytics lets you do something with that. Um, we'll, we'll follow up on that. I think you had your hand up. Yeah. Uh, so have you put Amazon Linux 2 on your roadmap yet? Amazon Linux 2? Yep. The update to Amazon Linux. Oh, man. I just heard about it, so no. <laughs> but uh, I'll talk to the agent team. So It's still barely in, in pre-release. I think they just dropped it not too long ago. OK. But there are some significant changes, because that's their move to system D. So. OK, great. I will follow up with our agent team. Yes, sir. So right now, we don't handle uh, anything except for core OS updates. Uh, but we are looking at what it would take to handle, for example, Microsoft updates that are coming through. Uh, yeah. Um, so is there a way to exclude packets by other than like name? Like say, I want everything that's older than you know 30 days. Oh. Not yet, but that is that is one of the requests that we hear. Uh, so are you looking to not report on compliance older than 30 days, or you want to say, during this update deployment, don't install patches that are less than 30 days old? OK, we don't have that yet, but we're, we hear it. Um, yes, sir? If I want to use this strictly for on-premises machines, and I have zero Azure today, what is the minimum amount of Azure I need to use uh, You will need an Azure account. You'll need a credit card linked to that account, because that's part of creating an Azure account. You'll need an automation account. Uh, well, we will create for you an automation account and a uh, log analytics workspace. Um, the only potential charge is for the uh, logs that get sent up. So, log anal so you pay for logs that get sent up. You get 500 megabytes free. And then after that, it's on the order of like two cents per gigabyte for log analytics. There's an agent on each box, or there's some on-premises. There's an there's an agent on each box, yeah. And we have we have instructions about how to deploy it, how to deploy it silently, all that stuff. Yes, sir. Um, we're talking about kind of the bandwidth and I guess the agent. Is there any plans, or is there currently functionality? For instance, if I have an agent deployed in this site, and there are other 20 other agents in the site that are also managed by the same agent, um, that it would then distribute the patches locally, or use those to kind of do peer-to-peer, -peer, or does everything have to come back to the server for all agents? So questions about, I have multiple agents on the same site. Is there like a proxy service for uh, for downloading updates? Uh, or peer-to-peer. Or, or peer -to -peer. So we, we just rely on, on native Windows Update agent functionality. If you have SCCM set up and configured already, uh, we should respect those settings, but we don't have plans to go in and, and do the agent peer to peer stuff. So you guys aren't there's no plan to replace FCCM for update management with this? Not not like the download peering stuff. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, if you need an agent on all of your on premise stuff, what's the point of the hybrid worker as well? Great question. <laughs> the hybrid worker is part of the is part of the agent, I believe. I, you have to get some. I have to follow up with you because I've been ignoring the hybrid worker. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I think it's part of the agent. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, we have, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, way in back. Um, any timelines, general timelines on the pre and post script support? Uh, it's on the order of months. Uh, it's. I would, I, it's a top request from our customers. We're taking it super seriously. Um, so, yeah. Yes, sir. Regarding the hybrid work, I was actually thinking that the agent is making the server in question a, a hybrid work. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. It's a system hybrid work, another run hybrid work. Like the one for so, the hybrid worker, uh, you would, you're trying, I'm Jenny, I'm also on the automation team. Uh, so, the hybrid worker. Functionality in order to run our PowerShell scripts that uh, 
So uh, to summarize, and thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you for saving my skin here. Uh, to summarize, <laughs> data what patches need to be installed, but it's the hybrid worker that actually runs the patches and actually triggers the scripts, runs the scripts to install the patches. So the instructions come from adding to the hybrid worker and then yep. zap on the machine. Yep. Thank you, Jenny. All right, every, every update management machine is a hybrid worker. Notify is different than the DIY one, so like only fairly signed scripts from Microsoft will be able to run against that. Thank you so much. It's, it's a little complicated. <laughs> That's my excuse. All right, any other questions? Not about hybrid worker. <laughs> yes, sir. Does any OS include client OS? We run on client OS. Um, it's not officially supported, but we're talking about it. So, I mean, we just depend on Wua being present, and Wua is present. So it works. Uh, if you, we we are just still discussing what how how supported it is. Any other questions? Yes, sir. I'm assuming if you're supporting Red Hat, is it also planning to satellite as well? Probably. Uh, we we have kind of a. We don't um, whitelist machines, so you can definitely try it out and, and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, let us know. Anything else? All right. Uh, I think I'm <clears throat> three minutes ahead, so uh, thank you so much for attending. Uh, please submit a session rating. I get evaluated on those. Uh, make sure that we're providing quality content. And uh, that's all I got. I'll be hanging around for a couple minutes next door in case anyone has any other questions. Thank you.